Ladies and gentlemen, I have a regal guest today. He is the 10th ranked light heavyweight in Bellator MMA, and he joins me today from the wonderful country of Sweden. He is the king, Mr. Carl Albrechtson. Carl, thank you so much for being here. I've been really wanting to talk with the king of Sweden, and now we're finally making it happen. Well, thank you for having me. Carl, I have had the opportunity to have some of your countrymen on my show before. I have talked to yes. Tobias Harilla, a very exciting, really cool guy. Uh, your teammate, Oliver Enkamp, I've also had the opportunity to meet with him. It seems like outside of you guys, also Sadabu Sai, uh, of course, Gustafsson, and just there's a list yes. of all these amazing fighters that are coming from your country. And I, I wanted to get your opinion, like when you look back 10 years ago at like what Swedish MMA was like then compared to what it was like, compared to what it's like now, can you tell me a little bit about just kind of what that experience has been like? I'm sure when you first started your professional career in Sweden compared to like what it looks like now, it's got to be completely different. Oh yeah, it's totally, now it's, it's mainstream here. It's uh, especially also comes up Chimaya, he has a big draw of the you know, new people so it's definitely it's ex last 10 years it has exploded with Gustafsson and everything so now we've got a good uh, structure in the organization of the like Swedish MMA Federation so it you know it's regularly coming up new fighters on the scene and like there's a lot of talented fighters on the amateur scene that's gonna be popping up here in a couple of years I, I know that uh, the IMAF tournament is going to be happening in Europe here next month. I'm sure that you have uh, people in your gym back home uh, that will probably be participating in that. Or is there are there any young amateur fighters in your gym uh, back in Sweden that you're really excited about? Yeah, in my gym, there's uh, one who's going to be a very good upcoming. He's probably going to go pro soon. His name is uh, Ma Martin Corney. And uh, he's ve he's very talented. He's young and he's hungry. He's up and coming, and he's getting better for each each time I see him. Well, I think that is uh, just really exciting, and it's really cool to see just like all this new talent that comes out of your country. It's very very exciting. It's what makes mixed martial arts such an amazing sport. I wanted to touch on a couple of things, but it happens to be my favorite fight of yours. And it was the most recent victory that you had against a very, very difficult opponent. At the end of that fight against Yaga Shermedov, you talked about how it took a toll on your body. You talked about vomiting blood, and you also were asked in, by the media a bunch of questions about beating up a really tough guy and what's next for you. And you kept saying over and over again, let me get home. Let me process this fight because that took a lot out of me mentally and physically. In the year plus since that fight has occurred, when you look back on that today, what are some of the, your big takeaways from that fight? I know I'm asking you to think back to a couple mm. of years, but that was such an incredible fight. Well, you know, I think I did a very strategic first round and uh, I dropped him in the second and the third one, I was <laughs> it was a back and forth, but I was pretty tired. So, yeah. It was a good fight. He's a good, he's a good guy. We had a good time and it was a good show. It absolutely was. And I know that you took some time off uh, in between uh, that fight and then the Carl Moore fight. That time off, like I know, like from a martial arts standpoint, we always talk about we in the media, we always ask you guys, like, how many fights are you going to have? Are you going to fight three times? Are you going to fight four times? And, and you took a good chunk of time off. Can you talk a little bit, like, how important was that time just kind of, like, in between fights for you? Maybe not just so much as a fighter, but just as a person. I mean, that was a really difficult fight, and I don't think a lot of fighters really think about the necessity of that time off. I think that's very important. Actually, it was not voluntary. I have uh, had the injury problems before me and the uh, doublet fight, so I had to take care of that after the fight. And then uh, I got injured again. So, yeah, you know, shit happens. <laughs> well, shit happens. And that's a perfect segue into the Carl Moore fight. This is a fight where I looked at it and I looked at it on paper. Now, this is me speaking, not you. I looked at it on paper and I was just like, Albertson's going to knock him out in the very first round. It almost happened. Uh, we were yeah. like inches away. Um Another referee could have waved off the fight, but, you know, that's just kind of the name of the game. 
I know that fight didn't end the way that you had wanted it to. And it was probably a disappointing loss to take because you were commanding that fight. Um, you looked big, you looked powerful, you looked really strong. And he uh, did a good job in getting back mount and, um, and applying the submission credit to your opponent. But when you look back at that fight now, I know that was probably a little bit of a disappointment. Like, what are your key takeaways from that? Well, you know, sometimes things in life, they decide to happen all at once. And sometimes, you know, I had a lot of stress at home mm -hmm. that I brought me with me to the fight. So, well, like I knew, like in the warm up and during the fight and after, like, I'm not feeling like myself. And for me, it was a mental issue and a mental problem that was in the fight. And uh, after the fight, I contacted a mental coach, actually, and we talked a long time mm -hmm. for maybe like two hours, one and a half hours. And then we started working and I feel I'm in a just a different mind state and a mental state nowadays. I feel like my, my quality of life has gotten much better, not only in, I take what he practiced into the training room and kind of show it in the in the cage but also like the quality of life has definitely improved and that's my biggest takeaway and like carl moore is not a slouch no. maybe carl moore has been gone for three years for competition but he's been training and uh oh i like carl he's a good guy he's a good fighter it was a must have been a good release for him at like home turf big name but you know I did not perform at my best and you know, shit happens, you know, you have to go home, regroup, rethink. And uh, for me, it was the mental thing. And I feel like I've definitely worked on it since the fight every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I'm looking to like, I need to perform at the abilities that I know I'm capable of. And I know if I do my best, I'm going to win and I'm going to knock out Grant Neal. Well, uh, let's talk about Grant Neal because uh, you're talking about a guy that's one of the top 205 pounders in Bellator. I believe he is the sixth ranked uh, Bellator fighter in your weight class. That's a really huge opportunity. And you're talking about fighting a guy coming off of the more fight, getting a guy that is incredibly dangerous. It's, it's, it's a very big fight, but it's also a very big opportunity for you to get in the middle of the rankings and to potentially, with a win over Neil, you're on that short list of contenders that could feasibly challenge for the title. I know you are very, very familiar with who the champion is. I know you guys have a little bit of history, but that's a, that's a topic for another day. I did want to talk uh, specifically about Grant Neal, a very, very gifted fighter. Um, I'm a, I've been impressed by him every single time I've seen him set foot in the cage. I do think there's an experience advantage in uh in your favor, though, um, you've been in martial arts for a very long time. You fought against the best men in the world for many, many years. When you look at Grant Neal, like, what are some of the things that you see about him that you believe will pose a challenge for you in February? He's a hell of an athlete. He's very strong. He's very fast. Uh, he's a good wrestler. He's got a very good, good double leg. He can also clinch fight. He's got a good jab, and I like that he works off the jab, and he's getting better with each fight. So I think Grant Neal, he's going to have a lot of success in his career. He's just not going to have a success against me. So, but uh, no, I, I like his style. He's a good fighter. He's good in all areas. He's a monster. But I'm going to win this fight. That's, that's, that's what I believe, and that's what I'm going to prove, and that's what I'm going to show. Would it be fair to, to say that uh, going into this fight that the power advantage and the striking advantage is in your favor? Is that a, is that a fair statement to make? Yeah, maybe. I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. so, too. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I look at this, though, and that, to me, I, I look at your size, your power, your strength. I, Me, personally, I don't know if he's quite seen a striker quite like you in the cage, and that is what makes this a very, very intriguing matchup. Well, I'm definitely the most experienced fighter he's ever faced so far. And he fought uh, Christian Edwards recently, but Christian has, you know... A very Christian gifted is good, prospect, yeah. yes. Yeah, but he doesn't have that all that experience yet, but he will get there. Yeah, he absolutely will get there. 
Um, I, I had one final question for you, uh, Mr. Albertson. It's simply this. You're in your athletic prime of your career. I really believe that the best of your martial arts journey is eminent. I believe that you also look at just all the things that you've done, the level of competition that you faced in the past is really only going to prime you for that much more success for the rest of 23 and beyond. You're still a young guy and you could realistically keep going and doing this for the next six or seven years if you felt like it. When you look at what you want to accomplish in the next couple of years, are there some goals that come to mind? Yeah, definitely. I want to be champion. That's Perfect. that's the number one goal, and that's the only thing that's that's the one goal. Like, I don't want to be second. I want to be champion. Yeah, and uh, with a victory over Grant Neal, that puts you on the very, very short list of men that can uh, realistically challenge uh, for the light heavyweight strap. I'm looking forward to seeing it, and uh, I wanted to give you one opportunity. If there are any people that you needed to thank, if you had like sponsors you needed to talk about. I'd like you to have that opportunity to do so before I let you go. And I, I want to thank my co longtime coach, Omar Buish. And I also like to thank my mental coach, Igor Adoris, for you know, putting up with my bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely perfect. Uh, you are a legend for being on my show, Carl. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Tyler. See you uh, next time. Yes, sir. I will see you at the press conference. Good luck in February.